How are we all doing? Hope everyone's keeping well. So, spent a few hours in here today. Um, I was messing around with this little radio here, uh, which I'll give you a listen to now. I had a go at the Polyjewel standard set that you'll remember from a while ago. Um, did a bit of work around the frame output stage. And that, it's it's working, it's playing away there at the minute on 405 lines and all. There's quite a few issues with it. When I first got it, the mains dropper was set for 200 on its lowest setting. And um, the CRT was obviously failing in it. Or maybe the valves were fa failing. Um, CRT is a little bit weak. Um, I have the dropper back set right now. And it's, it's okay, it's reasonable. I had to change the valves in the tuner. There was no gain at all, very poor. And so uh, I did the caps around the frame output stage a little bit better now. But um, there's a couple of issues. Uh, one, I don't think the CRT that's in it is the proper one for it. Uh, you'll remember when I first got it, I said that the CRT was loose. Uh, I went to tighten it earlier on and I realised that it doesn't fit right. So <laughs> I don't think it's the right one. I think the one that was in it was either the a fine bridge type, I hope I'm saying that right, or uh, an unprotected type with the pair specs um, bubble that goes on over them, which would be like a, another ploy that I have in the shed, because it's one of the ones with the rim band around it that comes out, but um, obviously that's sticking out through the front, and I don't think it being an ACDC set you should be able to touch any exposed metal work. Which is electrically connected inside the television, which it is because it's uh, grounded for the CRT. So that's going to be a bit of an issue now. The TV's only for myself and that, but I still have to think about safety. Um, so, anyway, for now I'll, I'll keep going with it. There's a couple of things. Um, you see, the CRT isn't great in any way, but it's serviceable. And, yeah, um, what else can I say? Well, that's about it. Oh, I had a bit of an interesting one with my Aurora. Um, so the set was working away, and then I got this awful hum bar across the test card. Moving up and down, hum on sound. Oh, no, what's that happening? So um, I got out my pet electrolytic. Of a electrolytic on clip blades. And I started going around the uh, smoothing block with that. Um, the hum bar was still there. Then I noticed when I clunk the tuner that uh, the raster wasn't affected the penny dropped down it was the feckin wall wart power on the aurora the um, reservoir caps obviously gone on it so it was putting hum into it and um, so it's just something to watch out for you know uh, right we'll have a look at the set no i'll let you listen to this thing first i don't know how good it's going to sound um, I'm using a set of um, headphones. The choose is a um, one transistor and an LM386. I'll put a link to the circuit. I got it off the, the radio board for them. So I'll have a look here. I'm using high impedance phones because I can't find me 36 on my normal headphones. It's a. Uh, all a bit touchy. I'll probably go this side with this. So this is the top of the medium wave band. Don't know how well that's gonna leave it, it will even come out at all, but give it a shot. That's Shannon Volmer, I think. I can't hear it.
so that's yeah that's um shannon valmet there seems to cover from about the top of the medium wave band up to about i think maybe yeah 40 meters Around 15 turns on this half inch ferrite rod and then of the long wire loosely coupled to that just one turn which is going to ground then. Um, yeah so I'll mess around with that a bit more. But it's just something I'm playing with. Um, bit of light. I'll give you a look at the raster here and I'll show you the tube and you can tell me what you think. As you can see, the metal band is exposed. It doesn't fit in right at all. So, it's tight. I think someone, <laughs> some young fella or something, probably found this beside a skip 30 or 40 years ago and got it going with what he had with the intention of just using it for a few months. So, <clears throat> that's why the the dropper was the way it was and, and what have you. There's a few dodgy repairs on it that'll have to be gone over as well. That's the I think that's the anode load for the uh sound output. You can see it there. Um I did have a mad idea, so you might talk a bit of sense into me when I'm at it. It has a very large cabinet with not a whole lot in it, and a very small speaker. Now I also got legs for it by the way. We scrapped a radiogram here a few weeks ago. That's the speaker and baffle bar over. And I was thinking of putting that speaker into it. <laughs> and I have a Pi black box amplifier that I got out of a record player that someone gave me years ago and it was totally rotten. Um the usual. Uh, full of wood one now and all damp shed. But the amplifier itself is perfect. Although I need to recap it, but it does work. I've had it going in the past. That's it there. Sitting there under some stuff. So, just a mad idea. But uh, I was thinking of putting the amplifier into it. And said it'd sound pretty good. Um, yeah, you can see that that's not the right CRT at all. Just the way it's stuck in there. And I don't think that metal band should be exposed. Um, what would it be in an ACDC set um, other than that change the caps around the frame output stage still a good bit of work to be done on it but um, yeah we're getting there alright let me know what you think and um, I'll catch you again in the next one mind yourselves out there and uh, like and subscribe thanks for watching